following podcast is being brought to you by the Defy Life Podcast Network. Maybe we can still heal you. Why? So you can just lock me up? No. Yeah. Just bury me in the ocean with my ancestors that jumped from the ships. Because they knew death was better than bondage. Oh, you think darkness is your ally? You merely adopted the dark. I was born in it, molded by it. I didn't see the light until I was already a man. By then, it was nothing to me but blind. <laughs> the shadows betray you because they belong to me. In the hell do you think you are? Okay, it's not working out. I'm gonna need the suit back. For how long? Forever. Yeah. Yeah, that's no, no, works. no, please, please, please. Let's sister, have it. You don't understand. Please, this is all I have. I'm nothing without this suit. If you're nothing without this suit, then you shouldn't have it, okay? So, Oz, this week we have another edition of the Open Mic, and I, I brought a couple guests on who uh, I have some history with, I guess would be a, uh, a good way to put it. You know, I, uh, I walked into their turf, very proud, very tall, and I, uh, when I walked back out, wasn't quite as tall as I was when I walked in. You know, I had to take some inches. So yeah, it took, it took a couple gotta of inches. Take off. them inches. Um, so Oz, we we have a uh, Steve and Ken from the Nerd Cantina. You might have uh, heard me mention them when I went on there for a Fight Me Friday. Uh, Oz, are you ready for them to uh, not only come at me, but now they're going to tag team? No, I, I, I'm excited. I just wish. Part of the stipulation of having Ken and Steve on where they promise to give your um, your balls back. But um, <laughs> I, hopefully they're going to FedEx those to you. We can have a good show. Um, but I'm just waiting. It's going to be great. I, I came here to kick ass and run promos, and we just ran a promo. So uh, <laughs> let, 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 let's do the damn thing. There you go. Quick quick plug off the bat. And then, so here we go. We got Ken and Steve from the Nerd Cantina. Please plug anything you want. Welcome to the show. Hey, just uh, just glad to be here. This is Ken, and uh, yeah, just looking forward to it. We 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 did send you your balls back. Because then what's the, what's the what's the f- point of the episode if we're not taking them again? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We'll, 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 by the way, we'll, we'll hang them we'll hang them up above the ring. You know, you can you can climb you can climb the ladder, try to get them. We'll we'll kick it over a few times. So now this It'll has be become fun. a ladder match. <laughs> now it's become a ladder match with my balls hanging above the ring. <laughs> well, I, I mean, it's not just you. I, I do have goals to to get Oz to start four sentences but finish none of them. <laughs> hey, that, that's ambitious, Steve. That's very ambitious. We all can dream. It's fine. Oh man, yeah. This uh, this one, this one's good. I think this one's rearing up to be a. Uh, a very fun conversation. Now, Steve, I I heard you came prepared with a list. Yeah, I did. Uh, so I've I've listened to the last I think six episodes weekly now, and there's you know the the things the the benefit of having a a uh, a podcast also and in doing this podcast exchange is I don't just have to yell this shit at my car like like the rest of your audience. I mean. Blurdy's Blurdy's really good on the email tip. I actually get to come here and vocally decimate the two of you with with your oh, ramblings. That's the live and in person. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, fair enough. And I, I'm looking forward to uh, this list. Now, Oz, you also said that you have a bit of a list for Stephen Kent. Yeah, and um, before before I. I, I, I dig in and like start like going straight for those guts and everything. Um, I will say this, man, dude, Stephen King, you guys have a fucking awesome show, though. Oh, we appreciate that. We it's do. super. It's cool. And um, 
just to say, I love the fact that you guys get into you get into um, the movies, you get into the comics, you also get into the whole like what it really is to be a nerd and the love of it, and you get pretty political about some stuff too. And like, I, I don't know, if political is the right word, maybe the social. Yeah, about we stuff. try to. Yeah, we try to keep politics it's social. out of it. I know. Yeah. You, there's you know so much of what we care about affects our daily lives and things like that so we want to bring a little bit of that into the show i mean you guys go into the real in-depth of the comics and the movies mm-hmm. which which we all love as nerds um we we look to bring in uh some of the aspects that that you don't really you know get to talk about often the the space exploration the you know how the internet is is handled in society and things like that that kind of affect our daily you know it's awesome, man. It's 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 really cool. I still got some I got some things for you, and I'm but I'm, I'm looking forward to hearing this. I'm, 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 so here. I'm, I'm looking forward to Uncle Isaac's take on free will. <laughs> well, well, <laughs> well, so um, I I I, I, I actually regular Scott brought that, but before we get into that, I have one thing. Andy Circus, right? Yeah. Right yep. now, what is this luck thing we I heard? That he's a luck Steve. He's lucky. Have you not seen this guy's like inventory of what he's done? But dude? he basically got found the same way like like Harrison Ford is lucky. Harrison Ford was a carpenter on the set of Star Wars, trying to be an actor, and then oh. just becomes Han Solo, Indiana Jones, and then shits on Hollywood for the next three decades. You know, <laughs> Andy Serkis was a motion capture actor. No one was supposed to know what this dude looks like in real life. No one was supposed to care about him. He's supposed to be in a leotard with ping pong balls taped to him. Shut the fuck up and go to your trailer. And next thing you know, oh, he doesn't he's... get a trailer. No, no, no. <laughs> Don't you give him a trailer? I, I, he doesn't even he, get a trailer. He, he goes back to his car. He, he he's gets back to in pick his car. five things off of craft, craft food services. He gets five choices and then he goes home. That's it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, like, it, it, He's pivoted that into this illustrious Hollywood career, you know, like good for him. I'm not saying he's bad or anything. I loved him in Black Panther, you know, but uh, but, but this dude has had a extremely long acting career. And, you know, like name, he name was something before Gollum. Give me um, some before Gollum, homie. You, you also know that he was um, he had a little small part in it, but he also was the motion dude for King Kong, too. Right. That was after Gollum. To wait, King Kong 2005? Well, but, 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 and before that, he had a ton of other acting stuff too, man. And not just Gollum, but he also did Caesar too. Okay. He was most, Caesar for most, all those. And he, he's, a, I, he, he's again, again, a dude in a leotard that nobody sees his face and you tell him to go home. No, no, dude. I, and, and I just, I feel like it's just like it's an underrepresentation of. Of his acting ability and his skill, you know. Is it no, no, so? So yeah, but there's. <laughs> it and, is. <laughs> and, and luck, luck is made. Luck is made by the combination of of opportunity and preparedness. It doesn't mean that he didn't want to be an actor. He wasn't hoping for this one day, but but he got an opportunity that he probably never saw coming. Like the him being in the leotard, just being. It's like it's kind of like a, a a stunt guy, all of a sudden just being asked. Oh, hey, you're doing a great job flipping around. Why don't you talk a little bit? Nobody asks these guys to talk. Yeah, it's it's just it's no different. Well, when than when that. they give the Leotard Lifetime Achievement Award out, for sure he's the first winner. <laughs> like, let no doubt. <laughs> this dude, this dude has just like had a ton of stuff. I'm just like scrolling through his like, hey, and this is all pre Gollum, pre little like my precious. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Like yeah. no, I, I don't, I don't yeah. think nobody knows what you're saying. <laughs> you said you're, you said you're scrolling. Okay, through, okay, hold on. All right, here. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just scroll through some crazy <laughs> crap right now. Let's see. Well, my children, season twenty-two. Um, he... well, a, a lot of stuff was that like he did a lot of TV acting and a lot of television work and stuff like that. Hey Oz, you know? Oz, while you do that, yeah. allow me to set the table. This is oh, Take yeah. a Knee for Marvel vs. DC. <laughs> I am your host, Regular Scott. I am here with the comic connoisseur who's hopefully going to find a couple movies uh, pre-Gollum, but I don't think he will either. 
reference because this is something he wanted to get us with. Right. Uncle Oz, what you got There's for us? There's plenty of other stuff to get you guys with, too. But... <laughs> and we have from the Nerd Cantina joining us for an open mic, Steve and Ken. What's going on, fellas? Plug anything you want. Well, I'm Steve from the Nerd Cantina, uh, founder of the blog and uh, co-founder of the podcast. Uh, what we're trying to do is just basically give us nerds a small little corner of the internet to come in, talk about everything nerdy, not just the current pop culture hits and what's going on in Marvel and DC. Uh, I know us nerds have a lot of other interests that we like to discuss, so we're just trying to carve out our little niche in the inter- in the interwebs and uh, have a nice little hangout. Yeah, and I'm uh, his co-host Ken, also his brother, who uh, kind of got <laughs> drug into this as we were getting ready to to, to launch the podcast. And really, I, I'm I'm the guy who claims I'm I'm a nerd who I don't have the time in my life to be the nerd that I want to be. And the Nerd Cantina <laughs> was that outlet that I needed. It gave me an opportunity to to kind of carve some time out, have some good conversations, and, and we've we're, we're we're loving what we're doing with the the podcast, and having a lot of fun with uh, with guys like uh, like yourself, there, regular Scott coming on you yeah. guys are awesome man yeah i don't and, know about that i feel like the fun was all y'all's i don't think the pleasure no, was mine it's, it's, yeah but that's yeah good, but that's man. the point of the podcast it's it's purely for ourselves um <laughs> <laughs> this yeah. is a very selfish endeavor <laughs> uh you can uh find them on anywhere you download your ipod or your uh um your podcast you can find them on itunes spreaker radio public podcoin shout out podcoin uh yep. you can also find us at knee for marvel vs dc on twitter and Instagram, anywhere else you download your podcast, you can find us there as well. All right, let's get back to this. Um, Uncle Oz, yeah, you, did you, did you, get, you, a, you get a movie yet? You got some? Um, no, not really. But, but, <laughs> this, this, but this is not a good start for us. I, I just, not a good start. I just say, I just say that this guy, this guy, like you were, let's all remember though, luck really is like two percent. Like, oh, I just fucking like I said, I'm shit not on trying that. to rip on dude. I'm not yeah. trying to offend him at all. Like, he, like I said, he did. Hey, he and by the way, hey, in Black he Panther, looks good. He looks good with those goddamn little tennis balls on his leotard, though. Uh, you know, right. that that's what you're into. Yeah, that's right. You know? <laughs> that's what I'm saying. So, <laughs> Oz is getting oh, a little. Not, not yeah, many people yeah. can pull well, that off, you know. And it, and it sounds like it sounds like there at the end, Oz was just justifying that. Yeah, he did get a little lucky, which means. Your topic that you brought to get us in the end, you just agreed with us. No, but, but we, we got hey, you. Hey, topic, hey. topic one. Yeah, topic, yeah. Name, name, name one person, Ken. Name, name, name a person in the, in, that doesn't. That's not a bit of luck with this. You oh, know? Well, if there, there's, luck there's also this guy. Luck. You know, they don't. They don't just go. Hey, Jar Jar Binks. Sometimes they do. But like uh, this guy has come, but he came packing with some heat before he came into Gollum. You know. Yeah, he opportunity opened the door and and he kicked it wide and, and he, ran. he he said like let him. me in you know good for him let's right, not no. deny that his stardom rested on his performance in tights that's true I don't think anyone can deny that. As, as a and talk to any Shakespearean actor they'll say rock and roll dude <laughs> and I, I, I and I also I also say this just too. just so we know Oz is going to have the first review on that cat's movie now. Um, <laughs> So, but and and then uh, one other note, I will say, um, man, Steve Elizabeth Shue is fucking awesome. But man, it, it warmed my childish heart to, to it, see her. On it was again. so good. This for everybody. This is about the boys. It was so good to see her in the boys. I was like, holy shit! And she did an awesome job in it too. Did they did they put her in the trailers or anything? Because I want to say I was really actually surprised to see. I was her totally surprised. The first man. episode. You know, and I, I forget she was the love interest in Cocktail, too. Mm-hmm. That, that, that's yeah. another, that's a, I mean, I was well, people totally always remember, um, um, oh, God, not Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas, but um, the Nicolas Cage movie that she's in. Oh, what is that Leaving one? Leaving Las Vegas? Is it leave, it's Leaving Las Vegas, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but oh my gosh, she's, oh, she's, she's had a long, good career, you know? Yeah, we, we talked about it. That, that was a, such a smart recasting by... In the sense that in the comics, that character, the head of Vought, is a male. And mm-hmm. then making it a female character, it played so well with what they were trying to do with Homelander. She was mm-hmm. a great, powerful woman in that position who, who really, like, I mean, she just she just it, it embodied it. it. It was it was really awesome to see. Um, well, Stephen Ken, let me ask you guys, um, speaking on the boys, 
since you're on our show, I'd like to have you guys rank it with our ranking scale. Uh, the top being Iris West, MGK, Jar Jar Binks, and then at the bottom, The Guardian. How would you guys rank the boys? <laughs> so I, 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 I'm going with the, the Iris West doing the iris west with the the infinity gauntlet the whole, oh, wow. whole thing it, that, that's <laughs> that, that this that show is so incredibly well done in a in a genre that needed kind of uh kind of poking fun at itself and mm-hmm. and being being dark and, and gritty it, and i think it's going to bring in even a lot of people that you know they're tired of marvel they're tired of everything else because it it kind of ties in a little bit of a you know criticizing Damn. that whole community mm-hmm. yeah I'm, I'm gonna have to go with iris west too it's just not just for the sake that i have issue number one first print and the better this <laughs> the better this show does the better my investment is um <laughs> but it, like you said it was just it was phenomenally done even the stuff they changed um you couldn't go as as dark and as deep yeah. as they did in the comics if you wanted to keep it you know on television um, and, Love sausage would not go over too well. On no, TV, so. I, I don't think I don't think they're going to put that gerbil in anybody on. <laughs> let's, let's be real here. The one scene I did hear they had to cut out um, was that they actually filmed yeah. was uh, Homelander floating above the city and masturbating onto the city. They actually, <laughs> Am- they filmed that. They yeah. had it in the show. <laughs> But Amazon was like, "Yeah, no, guys, that's that's our line right there, bro." Like, no, <laughs> oh my God. no, no, we're 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 good with we're good with rape. We're good we're good with a little yeah. bit of deadly deadly face smashing cunnilingus, <laughs> but but <laughs> masturbation. Uh, listen, listen, you can, just a little you can too kill a baby. Personal. You can kill a baby, but we cannot have you masturbating over a city. That, that's we gotta draw. We don't know that baby's dead. We don't know that baby's yeah, we dead. We don't know the baby's dead. I, that's I, true. That's true. I don't think the baby's dead. I, I don't, don't think he's dead either. I don't think he's dead either. I think he got the I baby out. I think this is all just to try and hurt um, Butcher because Butcher tried to hurt him, and he was like, "Nah, let me well, flip since that." We're on the subject, the one thing that I'm not upset that they changed. I I am a little like disappointed because it was probably one of my favorite aspects of the comic is that um, Butcher didn't know for sure until like the end, you know, he, that she was missing. She Mm -hmm. wasn't dead in the comics. No, she was for sure dead. Butcher, Butcher had the super baby and that super baby burned two laser eyes into his arm be, with its baby laser vision when he picked it up and oh, that yeah. was like that was like the motivation that drived him like every day he woke up and he had these two eye with burn holes on his arm from this rape baby from homeland uh, homelander like that to me that just was like you understood for sure why this dude only cared about killing dude because he had to look at them two dots on his arm every day every day, every day. And I think it really has to change. It has to change the direction that that Butcher is going to go because, again, in the comic, yeah, his his wife is one hundred percent dead, and yep. it was it was rape. Well, now at the end of the season, his whole motivation's gone. Now it looks like consensual sex that his wife has kept from him and is still hiding away from him, yep. willingly. So now it it really has to change his character as a whole because, man, you got to be a little pissed at your wife now, like. Is, is all your anger really at the soups or is it at the, the, the treacherous wife? Is it ch- really change who he is and what his end goals are in the future? Yeah. She's hiding from both of them. Yeah. You know, so as someone yeah, who's was... never read the comics, um, I, I really liked it. Like I liked the relationship that Homeland they're built, um, uh, with the old girl. And then the way he kind of stepped out on his own. I liked that it kind of twisted to be at the end that she at least in, in my eyes, she wasn't raped, you know, and it was pretty consensual and she's living a good life without butcher. Like I, I, I didn't read the comics, so I didn't have that to base it on. So I kind of went in with a blank slate, but I really like what they did with the ending. Yeah. I'm for the, like I said, I'm for the changes. It was just like one of my favorite parts of the mm-hmm. comic that I know isn't going to be in there anymore. So it's kind of, you know, womp womp for me, but I, even if they don't from the second season on follow anything with the comics, they still set the table with the the beginning of the comics, and as long as that table's set, 
I I don't care what meal comes out now <laughs> afterwards. I I have full faith that it's going to be good, whether it's true to the comic form or not. Like I'm I'm just here for it now. Yeah, and, and they try to stay true to the comic, like in little weird ways. Like he doesn't have the he didn't have to like get burned by the baby, but they had the baby who had laser eyes in it too. Yeah, know? now he's now he's a little kid. Like yeah. So no, yeah, I, go ahead. I, yeah, you know, I think I, I I have no issues. I I, th- I think you you always have to make changes, and as yeah. long as they make as long as they make sense and they they progress the story, it's a it's a different medium. I, I mean, TV is different than comics. You you do things differently, and I think what they I think all the changes they made, they didn't seem like arbitrary. They didn't seem like they just made them for the sake of being different. No, they 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 made them to progress a different direction in story that they're going. I, I think the direction they're heading is is great. It keeps the tone of the boys, but not mm-hmm. necessarily. I, word for word the story which is which is awesome and there are a lot of people who are watching this show that don't even know that the boys yeah. is a comic you know and i'm going to get my my <clears throat> issue number one cgc graded um at the comic-con next uh week in chicago like i'm i'm getting that shit encased <laughs> professionally graded i'm man i'm trying to pay a, a mortgage payment Dude, this, this is like it's a walk <laughs> it's a walking it's a walking dead thing man it's a walking well dead i thing, i you know? we had looked it up uh, Walking Dead had like I want to say it's only like seven thousand, seven thousand first printings. The boys had like thirty two thousand. So it's not as mm-hmm. rare, but I, you know, we'll see. Yeah, we'll see what the demand is. That's awesome. I'll, I'll, I'll see what that eBay number climbs to. I'll let y'all know. <laughs> yeah, and hey, hey, look, letting us know and breaking us off a little bit of that bread too. <laughs> like, Man, you ain't running that promo for that eBay page. <laughs> <laughs> I've, been, I've had this comic on my shelf for 15 years because it's like a 9.6 grading I, i've moved like seven times since i bought it you, you know how hard it is to keep a comic at a 9.6 value i do I do. I do because i've never been able to do it <laughs> that's, that, look, that's how i, I do because i've never been well, able to do it we'll, we'll, we'll find out in two weeks <laughs> Hey, so let me let me ask you guys, um, what are your kind of your predictions for season two of the boys? Where where do you see them going as people who have read the comics? Like you said, I I honestly don't know if they're going to follow the comics. They've pivoted now to where I I think they'll they might take some some minor characteristics and story arcs, some minor story arcs. But I think the main the main story is is going to be free for all for them you know it's going to be it, it'll be original content i'm pretty sure i mean they'll they'll do some nods just to keep the yep. the uber nerd happy you know so so oz doesn't come on your show and 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 start ranting and raving about how they fuck something up steve i will steve i will rant and rave about everything i can though well, that's okay. okay. I need to, I need to change my oil every now and then, so it, it helps. <laughs> it works hey, out everybody, build an igloo because I will keep ranting and raving. But you know, also along, it's like they're going to turn into like a Game of Thrones where they still, like you said, Steve, give a little throw, but they're going to do their own little thing too. I, but I think yeah. it's, so, it's such an obscure comic. I don't think there's going to be even if the people that are loyalists to the comic, I I don't think they're going to make too much noise, even even if they do. Well, it's you, me, and Ken, but, I mean, all we can do is just complain on our podcast, so it's fine. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if we go by yeah. these demographics, 75% of the population has read the comic, so I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I'll be a brave I, one I, to say I haven't. I, 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 I'm hoping they do some, some things. I, I, I don't think they're going to go very close to the storyline uh, either, but I, I think the you're going to get the – the boys are going to start juicing up, right? They're going to start doing yep. the, the compound V in order to compete and – uh, and actually fight. I don't know where you're going to find the motivation for uh, for Butcher to keep fighting. What's going to end up happening is it's, it's probably going to be his wife was like forced into exile by Vought, so that way he could still maintain that fire at, yeah. at the corporation <clears throat> and at at, uh, at at and not direct it towards oh, that, his that dude's going to cry. Like season two yeah. is going to start out. That dude's going to cry. He's going to be in a corner somewhere listening to some power ballads from foreigner or some shit and and just <laughs> bawling away it's captain america with his broken shield on his knees <laughs> you know no we'll, we'll see because we're gonna see he's gonna have this confrontation with his wife then the homelander's gonna be like 
well, yeah, you were kind of hiding from me, too. And then she's going to be freaked out by both of them. And then the boy is going to be like, you're the cool guy, Homelander. Who's this weirdo butcher dude? And so, yeah, Mama, you got a lot of explaining to do. So regular regular Scott gives away a million dollars. We at the Nerd Cantina have uh, Nerd Stradamus. <laughs> I, I often quite make predictions that end right, up okay. coming into fruition. <laughs> so my Nerd Stradamus is episode one. That little kid fucks Butcher up. Oh wow! <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the, the butcher starts getting loud, and then you can't be getting loud with my mama, and he's gonna he's gonna bust his shit right there in the front yard. Yes, the, I, I, I love. That. Maybe they get a throwback to the comics, and maybe he burns Butcher's arm. Oh, I'd love it! I'd love it. That would be I'll a good take, I'll, take, I'll take that little morsel of a nod. I would. Yeah, Nerdstradamus has spoken. Wow, <laughs> I like that. I'm with that. And look, and Oz, the best part is he said I give away a million dollars. What? Yeah. What do you think about that? Not you. Uh, You're not giving it, away it, no money. No, no, it, it's fine. You know what? I, you know what I want to get into? I want to get into the rest of what they, what they have because I'm ready. I'm oh, ready. okay. So, this so be this, number, this, this is bear this number is two, that, by the way. This should be an interesting conversation that we can all participate in. So. I want to say about three, four weeks ago, you guys were having a Star Wars talk and about, you know, Lando being the only black guy. And then you're like, well, you know, the droids and this and that. All right, I'll give you CP- C-3PO for sure. White British dude. Can't can't deny it. <laughs> Got to be. All right. <laughs> Chewbacca ain't black, homie. I'm I, I'm I'm going to be apologetic right now and tell you that you, you got your hopes up a little too soon with that. And I'm not saying he's white either. Chewbacca's a cholo. All right, <laughs> come on, man. Get out of here. He's brown. He speaks a language only certain people understand. And he's a mechanic. You put a bandana and a, and a button up flannel he's with only the cholo. top button buttoned on him. He's a straight cholo. If he had a super the long Mexican mustache, got, too. got chewy, man. You can't, you can't take that from our Mexican friends out there. I'm see, you. See, now look, every Steve saying, if you if Steve, now listen, I want you all to hear very carefully. Steve said. If Chewbacca had a white beater on, oh, okay. No, I said he, he, flannel, right in black flannel with just a top <laughs> button, button and and a and a band. I mean, that bandolier could be the bandana, like that. It, it kind of is bandana it, right there. Yeah. It kind of is come on that kind of like kind of like you know that whole um like bandito kind of thing. You know with okay. that whole R two D 2s Asian. I don't know, like, where y'all get white people with this tiny droid that's really good at math and speaks a language that can nobody fucking understand. Except for C three PO. Hey, so so bad. one thing about Chewie, I I uh, I have to disagree because he's way too tall. Yeah. <laughs> is that is that foul? That's, is that that's foul? true. See, no, no, that's, so now no, I'm walking it as as a as a middle aged white male. I'm walking on eggshells. <laughs> uh, because then the only other option. For, for the for our Mexican friends, are the Ewoks, and I won't do that to them. Dude, I, I, I won't, I won't, I'm not going to do that. I got. I, I worked at a nightclub. I have too many busboy Mexican friends to just brand them the short stubby Ewoks. I'm no, nah, they they can have two. He said, "No, they can have two. <laughs> Oh, that's funny. So we're, we're, we're just we're throwing Chewy. I'm just, I don't know. I don't know about that. I'm just... I mean, you can't you can't be mad with having Lando, especially yeah. after the way Donald Glover portrayed him. Like I loved Donald Glover's Lando in in Solo. That that that's great. But I'm just saying, in that whole Star Wars universe, hey, you're, oh Lando, you're my dad for real. Oh, that's crazy. You know, come on, man. we can do better than that. Well, we can do better than that. At the, okay? at the end of the day, we have Jar Jar Binks, so we have that. To, we have that to be proud of. At the See, end of the I, day, I if I was y'all too, I'd have dumped him on somebody. I, I'd like. <laughs> yeah, he said I'd have dumped he, him. I, I'd, have put the, I'd have put him on the Polish community or the, something. The, the, <laughs> the one dude, Jar Jar Binks, the one dude who can never go to any Comic Con, anything. Get any benefit of anything. That dude, that, I'm sorry. That's, hey, that's just terrible. I don't think little Anakin can go anywhere either. Ooh. Uh, I, think, I think Annie's all right. I Is think he? You think so? Yeah. Little, like, little Anakin doesn't like, want to go like anywhere. having a revival like Haley Joel Osment's. I, that, I was just about to bring him up. I was going to say, like, he's, he, maybe he's not going to have a big role, but, but maybe you'll see him uh, yeah, in, in something Se- like the Season boys, two. Season character. two. Yeah. 
bring back all the child stars and the boys. Hey, that would be kind of cool. We have them all death. be superheroes. That would be kind of well, cool. <laughs> well, they all and they all meet at death somehow. So Macaulay Culkin, here your your turn is coming, sir. <laughs> yeah, I, Macaulay Culkin's still living on that Home Alone money. He don't give a uh, shit about and, nobody. Yeah, and he's still killing it. He, dude, and they he, they uh the tweets there because uh, let me see talk about bringing back Home for a TV show now that they they have the the rights and he you got to check out he's making him just being fat sitting on a couch covered in food or whatever else talking about oh, he's ready to film the Home Alone. Yeah, he oh, he, 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 he's there. He waiting on so that, that check. He's coming. That was that was gripe number one. Was my was the was the Chewy. The minute okay. I heard you guys claim Chewy for the African American community, <laughs> I was like, nope, nope, I can't do that. I can't let that ride. You know, and and everyone th- would think that you know I'm trying to, to hone him for our home team, but no, nah, I'm telling you, he's he's straight <laughs> cholo. Every time I see Chewy, he is straight cholo. Everybody, for the record, we're still on the fence. He could, he could be half black, half. Uh, we're just seeing. We're, we're hey, he mixed. That's what it is. He mixed. There it is. <laughs> he's mixed. That's what he is. Yeah, he's That's the, the bridge. He's the uh, bridge. You, you hold on to that straw. You do that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What else? What else you got for us, Steve? Uh, so, so what's fresh in my head also is last week, um, your Defy Life, uh, buddies. We're a little, little harsh in a few ways. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to tell you right now, y'all try to cancel Keanu. We riot in this bitch. <laughs> I, I'm telling you right now, try to cancel Keanu. We will take the streets. <laughs> That's, hey, that, that is all. I'm, thank you. Oh, thank you very much. And nobody, nobody mentioned that he's Johnny fucking Bravo, man. Y'all don't remember Point Break? Oh, I know. I know. Yeah. Yeah. They yeah, talk about his action stars or whatever else he had. Nothing. It's like, no, I, I, I was listening to the same thing saying, Point Break. <laughs> what are we doing here? I was yelling at, I was yelling at my radio. <laughs> like, fucking Point Break, man. You jumped out the plane trying to get Wait, the dirt, like, oh, no. Yeah, you brought, it, you brought up speed. I'm glad, I'm glad somebody brought up speed. Yeah. I am an that, FBI that movie needed agent. To, needed to be discussed. <laughs> hey, Ken and Steve, I was just thinking about um, Keanu today when when he's at the um, when he's there uh, last scene when um, the Australian um, police are going, you let him go. He's not going anywhere. <laughs> uh-huh. Man, don't, don't nobody. Everybody ain't nobody got love for Johnny Mnemonic. Nobody's nobody's got oh, love. Oh, Johnny Mnemonic is got awful, love dude. for Johnny Mnemonic. Hey, all that stuff led to John Wick, dude. All hey, of this started leading right that now, way. Y'all fuck- Keanu, we we, we riot. We're, we say we're done. We're done. I'm cool with Keanu. I'm cool with Keanu. I'm cool with Keanu too. Yeah, man. I'm cool with. I roll with Keanu. Well, and it, it was part of like the theme too that that I wanted to bring up is I think you guys put way too much emphasis of like overall movie on the actors. So like you guys were saying how great Hugh Jackman was as uh, Wolverine in the X Men films, but then in the uh, the what is it the the Japanese one um the Wolverine the, the movie Wolverine. oh yeah yeah that that he wasn't as good in, in that one that there's there's producers involved directors mm-hmm. writers you know cinematographers all involved I wouldn't put that weight on Jackman same thing with like you guys were like man Tom Holland's so great at Spider Man which he is I'm not gonna deny that and you're like you know. His 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 one liners in Civil War were great. Tom Holland didn't have shit to do with that. Those fucking writers. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Like, yeah. That's right, Steve. Tom Holland way too much credit that, for that's awesome. For his that is a man performance. Like what he no, said Steve, had that's, that's to beautiful. Do with him. That's beautiful and brilliant. But but again, name a better Spider Man than Tom Holland. No, I won't. I won't. That, that, there that, you that, go. See, that's what I won't. Oh, yeah, that's somebody that's portrayed it. Talking about where we're assigning blame and and. Uh, praise too so so praise him for what they're good at yeah he's a great actor he he plays the character really well mm-hmm. um he delivers the lines great but he didn't ad lib well, that shit and and he's he other than so dude's got like a british accent in real life so he has, yeah. has an american accent but other than that he's not acting he is he is a a dumb naive 
white kid. Like that that is what he is. Like if you ever see him in an actual interview somewhere talking like a normal person, he can't. He's he just can't having fun. Together. Yeah, he's doing the same. Yeah, he's, he's just, just like <laughs> he's a naive high schooler, period. Like I he's not acting at that point in time. He's just adding an American accent to his normal reactions. So no so like yeah, if Jackman's got three good Wolverine performances under his belt yeah. and then the one flop, it's hard to believe that that is due to Jackman. That is due to the 30 other people that, that get mixed up when a movie's made. You know, there's, there's plenty of actors that come out after these movies and are like, man, I wanted to make a good movie. I just couldn't, you know, like a lot of people oh, hate, absolutely. a lot of people hate Jared Leto's Joker. I love Jared Leto's Joker. And I think anything yeah. wrong with it was, was <laughs> due to bad directing and bad editing. I, I look, I, I don't need my Joker to have gold fronts. <laughs> um, that's just, that's my that's my that's you don't my like thing. gangster joker. I like gangster joker. I don't like it. I don't need because I, like, I don't it, like gangster joker. You're talking to a dude joker, with hand see, tattoos and shit. See, like I'm, I'm hey, I love a hey, hand t- hand tattoos are awesome. But let me tell you, if Jack Nicholson Joker, Jared Leto Joker, and um and Heath Ledger Joker are in a room, Jared Leto is the first Joker taken out. We know no, this. See, one's okay? gotta yep. go. One's gotta go. That's not my, the one I gotta go. No, that's who, not who, it. Who, who, man, Jack Nicholson has the old. He's old and just lethal. Yeah. You know. Oh, come on. Go front, Joker. He's like, I'm out, dude. I, I have no knives. I have nothing. You know. Like I said, I think that was. I think that was bad editing. I think Lado said that they cut like five, six minutes of his, of what, of what he performed out of the movie. So there's Jeez, a whole sad. scene. There's a whole scene that he did that they cut out of the movie. Yeah. Um, the, the, some of the scenes were great. The, hint, the scene with him and Harley, uh, where where she gets made into actually Harley Quinn was was great. Uh, the 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 breaking her out of the the prison was great. I mean, mm-hmm. there was so much good about that character that the the stuff that just didn't sit well or play well in the movie, I can't put on Leto. I can't do it. Given the fact that he's won Oscars, he's done like he's played great roles. Like to think that he couldn't be a good Joker, I, I just I won't believe that. I won't. I won't do it. I, I, and he's I, also I, in my so-called life. Yeah, this is true. That's where. Let's not forget. Sorry. But you still didn't say which <laughs> other one would go. I, I I don't think he is not better than the other two. And in fact, I will I will preemptively take Joaquin Phoenix's Joker over his. He could still go. I'll keep Joaquin <laughs> Phoenix. You haven't even seen the movie yet. You're already picking yeah, Joaquin. I, 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 got, I, got a, I got a trailer of his deranged ass, and I'll take him. Uh, I mean, it's not going to be a popular opinion, but honestly, I'd, I'd get rid of, of Nicholas. Uh, you know yeah, what? You know what? Out of your options, I'll take that one instead of Mark Hamill or um, Heath Ledger. If you're gonna yeah. take one, if you're gonna, if you have to boot one, which I don't agree with, but if you have to boot one, at least it was <laughs> Nicholas. I mean, for the time, it was a great Joker rendition. It was like the best at the time, um, but there was a little bit of cheese to it. You know, the whole parade scene. Um, you know, like it's it's of its time. Yeah, you know, I mean, a, he was he was time. a very camp. It was a very campy Joker. It, it comes off. Like a little more foolish than deranged. I, I I don't know. I felt I felt more. I felt I he was more of a more su- in terms of him and Leto. He was more of a more subtle Joker who still had man. Leto was pissing in people's cereal in real life to play that role. Like, yeah, he that was dude. pissing people off too. By the way, <laughs> the, 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 his co-stars like, are so like, get the fuck away from me, dude. Leto was about that life, man, and and I'm all for that. Hey, 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 and I want to get back to this whole the Wolverine with he, which with Hugh Jackman. Oh, sorry, Hugh Jackman. Um, I don't know wow. what your dude, beef is with oh, Jackman. Wow. But... No, no, no. I, I just love. See, it's just funny to me. Look, that movie is actually really That's good, Mr. except for the end of it. That's the why end of that movie it. That's sucks, Mr. dude. Girl. <laughs> <laughs> well, there ain't, there ain't no room. See. There ain't Shots no fired. room that Hugh Jackman ain't walking in and either flashing some six pack at taking half the girls in the room and then he's going to tap dance over to the other half of them bitches and get the rest of them. <laughs> he's, he's singing he's singing <laughs> show suit tunes and beating up dudes too at the that, same that time dude by the way. deadly on every front. That is Mr. Steal Your Girl. You better watch out. Don't, yeah. go, to, don't go to no convention dudes that with no lady because you you going home. <laughs> yeah, right. Hide your wives. Hide your girlfriends. 
Just saying. But yeah, but like the last like what always gets me is a movie will be so good. Well, or just even good, but then the last like ten minutes, fifteen minutes, they blow it. And the Wolverine was just it just got stupid at the end of it. I was like, what are you like doing? I said, not Jackson's fault. He's probably Absolutely sitting in his true. trailer going, What the hell am I doing here? You know, <laughs> like he was like, Can like, you CGI me please? Yeah, like I mean the minute Ryan Reynolds came out with with green tape over his mouth so they could do that horrid, <laughs> like he, he was probably you know during cutscenes he's probably just got these heavy ass claws on like, Jesus, I can't, I, I, I'm not doing another one. I'm not doing another one. <laughs> you, you can't pay me enough. And then they came with another high number, and then he did more. <sighs> yeah. Oh, Ryan, with those long the long swords that come out of his hands. That's pretty clever. Anyway, um, what uh, what other beef you guys got? I'm ready. I'm ready. Uh, I'm trying to. <laughs> think. Nothing else because our it's Wait. perfect. Everything else is great. Cut it out, Oz. <laughs> Cut it out. <laughs> well, let's let's get some of yours, Oz. You said you got you yeah. got some for us. Yeah, go ahead. Come on with it. <laughs> oh man! All right, all right. Um, I, you know what? Um, n- nothing. Just more observations. So. So that's what he's the, saying now. Would you would you feel like the boys are kind of more? I, I loved. Uh, by the way, Ken and Steve, I loved your whole take on the whole corporate aspect of it too. That was awesome. So would you say the boys is more like kind of like on a Jupiter's legacy kind of thing? You know, as it, in it, it has that it has that whole. What you, when, when you guys on your show when you said if we had superheroes for real. I promise you, they would have a swoosh or Adidas sign on some, one of their costumes. Oh, for sure, oh for sure, they'd, you know? be, they'd be painted up like NASCAR drivers. Dude, it, it, it feels like Jupiter's Legacy kind of speaks about that. Have you guys read Jupiter's Legacy, the um, comic? I can't say that I have. Oh, no. you, I, I'll tell you, you guys should read that. It's a really good. It's um, Mark Millar, Miller, right? It's really, it's a good take on it. Similar to the boys, but it's on a more like, it's a little bit more serious than that as campy as the boys, but man. It's like legacy superheroes, and the original superheroes are noble. They're kids. Dude, spoiler alert, they're like, yo, um, Monster Drink, can you sponsor me, please? So what if you they know? wanted to read the comic instead of so, you spoiling it for them? Oh, but there's so much more. There's okay. so no, much no, more. Good. I, I, yeah, I, I, like, I think the, the boys plays off, and like my pessimistic outlook on what real superheroes would be it'd be that or there's a, a good book series by brandon sanderson called steel the first book steelheart and, and that's all about where like superheroes they just make territorial claims like hey i'm i'm the superhero my steelheart. Punk. I, yeah I, I i own chicago no other, oh, that's no awesome. other, and, and that's how they break it down no like no other, one superhero owns chicago no other superhero bothers to go into chicago they know that dude owns it and they just territorially broke up the whole world the whole globe and uh, it's like it's like on like some that, banks or stuff. That's what it should be. Yeah, if if you're looking for a, a book to read, um, that's in the superhero genre, we're really big Brandon Sanderson fans, and he it's a it's a trilogy, so there's three books about it, but it's all his take on on what would reality actually be like if superheroes had power, and we all know it's it's not going to be the Marvel DC version. We're not right, just I know kind of coexist together. You know what I mean? No, they're they're going to be the alphas, and how far they take that alpha mentality um, is up for you know that's that's where I think the good stories get told. Um, what's the, what's the book called again? Steelheart. Steelheart, I love it. <laughs> so we while we're on TV shows, we mentioned the uh, the Joker earlier. Mark Hamill is rumored to be portraying him in the DC crossover Crisis on Infinite Earths. What do you guys think about getting Kevin Conroy as Bruce Wayne and Burt Ward as Robin, getting an older Batman and Robin in this big crossover they have since they don't want to take any chances with the movies. They seem to take all their chances with their TV shows. Me and Ken had talked about before we got here, this is one of the things that we're going to try to have you guys do is um, because for the most part, DC has great. Okay, so we'll start it off with this premise. DC has great characters. They have great, great characters, and they've had some good, some good storylines. But for the most part, they are the flaming bag of shit left on your front door. Mm. Um, sell us on why we should be watching any of these TV shows. So um, I'm, you... I'm halfway through Arrowverse right yeah. now. Um, 
where I, I'm going to buy Titans first season on Blu-ray because it was on sale the other day, and I'm not signing up for another streaming service that's brand new. <laughs> I won't do so, it. I won't do it. And, and that, that's that's so that's the thing. I, I've seen some Arrowverse shows, and I, I, I'm not not a big fan. Uh, and I will not just contribute to some DC thing that doesn't even have all the DC shows. They still are giving up a lot of the rights to CW, so they're not even pulling in all their shows into their mm-hmm. own streaming service. It's such a it's it's so stupid. I do not support them chipping away another nine ninety nine or whatever it is out of my pocket. It, it, yeah, it is, it is, it is. It's true. It's nine ninety nine. Now, a regular Scott, can I give him? Can I give him a quick selling like spoiler alert? Everything. Well, I'm well, trying to make it. Well, first of all, well, no, I'm watching the over. So I printed out a long list of the watch order. You know, watch. So I'm on season four of. Arrow, season uh, two Arrow's ter- Flash. Tor- is terrible. Yeah, no, Arrow's thanks. not terrible, but season four is terrible. Arrow is terrible, dude. I, I think <laughs> I, that's I where I stopped. Say, I want to say this season is where I start integrating in Legends of Tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Which and, which is horrible. And then the Legends yeah. of Tomorrow is, is trash. And I started to watch Supergirl. When Everything year, about Legends is terrible. But I Everything. Mean, like, don't... Yeah. Th- like... Tall, black, suave Jimmy Olsen, fuck you. I'm sorry. Shout wait, out to wait, the Guardians. Wait, Steve, wait, Steve, wait, wait, wait. You don't like back. Jimmy Olsen who has a motorcycle who's also the Guardian? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's sucks, it's, I, don't, I don't care if he's black, but he should have been Urkel. Like, he, <laughs> he needed to be Jimmy fucking Olsen. But, and, and, and then they wheel out, like, this just gigantic, good-looking, suave, like, I'm Jimmy Olsen. I'm right? yeah. super. Yes. Bad. And it's just like, no, you're fucking not. Like, you're a gap model, motherfucker. What's yes. wrong with you? Like, you're, I, you're, so, you're that dude from Banana Republic. I know who you really are. Four, four episodes in, I just couldn't with Jimmy Olsen anymore, and I quit. So I'm going to have to bite through that and, and get through through that. So so don't give too many spoilers away on the Arrowverse, because I am going to try to give my honest, like, try. Like, good old college try, and see if I can't grind my teeth through this thing and, and well you're a better eyes. man than me well here's a couple yeah, of things yeah. with that oz <clears throat> isn't able to do anything quick or without spoilers okay <laughs> okay see you know <clears throat> Reg- regular scott that was really mean and i'm gonna give you a, oh, a, a 30 minute reason why say, that was really mean <laughs> in, 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 internal <laughs> shots fired <laughs> um, hey, hey, and look well while you're at it steve you might as well put Black Lightning on your thing too, so you can really hate all of three the CW. Ep- three episodes in, couldn't do it. <laughs> like, cause, cause that's the thing. That's our thing, right? Yeah. We we all have to consume this content because we we do give our opinions. You know, you guys go really into to the to to the minutia of these things. You know, we kind of give our quick synopsises. But either way, we all gotta consume it, and so I, I give it a try. And then at just one point, I realized I only have 24 hours in the day. My kids and my job take up a big chunk of it, and Black Lightning ain't going to get his piece of the pie. I'm telling you uh, right now. I was going to say, I, I unapologetically just say, nope. I'm not watching any of it. <laughs> <laughs> whatever, whatever, whatever DC fans we have. If they're mad at us for not talking about it, I'll go ahead and give a link to your yeah, show, and you guys, yeah. you guys can get a new, new listener. Yeah. Right. Send you an email to Steve at thenerdcantina dot com. Uh, hey, hey, I'm, I'm going to give you guys. I'm looking for you, son. Come on with it, Steph Barty. <laughs> Shout out Steph Blurdy. Actually, I think I have an email from Steph Blurdy now that you mentioned it. Hey, hey, hey Scott, you, hey, regular Scott, you got to get to the email too when we have time. But I'm going to tell you guys that look, all of that CW shit, Scott, please disagree. I love it. It's garbage, dude. Now, I was in season one, two of The Flash just because it was different. It was kind of cool. I, and the actor was really sincere to me. I thought I kind of like, I liked his acting. But then after that, I was just like, hmm. And then they did, oh, I can't do a spoiler alert. You guys have to go through it, and then we'll talk about it later. But they, ah, uh, it, it's, it's been troublesome. And then Legends Let's is just, just man. Like they, they peaked early. <laughs> oh, no, dude. dude. And then Legends they is just like. Up. Legends just, is such a cheesy, terrible well, show. Well, but, but back to this, back to the uh, Infinite Crisis, like, I do want to see Conroy as bruce wayne because then it's kind of cool yeah. like like i will I, i'm 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 down with a mark hamill j- 
Joker from some whatever <laughs> universe. Like, let these voices be associated visually with these characters. Mm-hmm. You know, um, to I was a huge Smallville fan. Like that's that was my shit back in the day. And I think the uh, what's his uh, he's got that long name, uh, dude who played Lex Luthor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Michael uh, Rosenbaum or something. Yeah, Michael Rosenbaum. He's coming back for that as Lex. Mm-hmm. And to me, that was one of the best portrayals of a television villain. Period. Let alone portrayal of Lex Luthor. Like I loved that whole that whole arc with him so i'm all for these guys coming back i just you know it's it's like eating your favorite sandwich on a on moldy bread like they're they're giving me all the meat and and they're giving me the peanut butter and jelly i love (laughs) but they're sandwiching it in with just some dank disgusting moldy bread and i'm gonna i'm gonna eat the fucking sandwich i'm gonna eat it but i ain't gonna like it i ain't gonna like it um now Aside from the CW, <clears throat> gentlemen, let's talk. You can get whatever you want to do, but I'm telling you, Titans is without too many spoiler alerts. Is just for one, it, that's it, what everybody says. That's what it's every, the best I, betrayal of Dick Grayson you'll ever on. see. It's the best okay, betrayal. I'm gonna of Dick buy Grayson. it. I'm gonna buy it on Blu-ray because it was. Yeah. But but the fact that Target had it on sale for fifteen dollars an entire TV season doesn't support your argument that much either. Well, you it, see, you've gotten gems before, Steve. You've gotten gems before. Not that, out the that. dollar bin, homie. <laughs> dude, nah, come on, man. Nah, nah, come on, dude. You, hey, people, just because people are like, oh, Titans. Oh, wait, this is not, remember the Titans? Oh, put that in the cell bin. Come on, dude. Okay? I I, I, I just, I, it, I've heard great things about the show. I actually want to see the show. I, someday I probably will. But, <laughs> but man, it's. Somebody's got to give me a password to to DC uh, to an account or something because I'm just not pay, I'm just not doing it. I, I'm so frustrated at these streaming services, and then it's not like DC even did a good job of creating their own streaming service. They oh, they no. really they they didn't they they didn't come up with a, an, an interesting user Swamp interface. Thing episode they, one, yeah. I like, shared they, I shared the Smokey gift. Like, how are you gonna get fired on your day off, man? Like, <clears> they can't this <throat> shit. Episode one. Yeah, and, 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 and that still was – well, they had a lot of, like, like location issues and just, like, yeah. a typical fighting. But still, there was, they, they had, a, like, they had some swamp, other shows. Man, just find a swamp. Like, go to I, Florida. But that, <laughs> Florida but that's, why DC, that's why DC sucks. Like, they, they just they, – they can't do this right. They're entertainment arm. Whoever told them that, like, yeah, you, you guys – you guys have enough content to create your own streaming service. Oh, you're not going to get any of your CW shit because shit, that's still under under contract over there. Right. Don't worry, you don't need it. Oh, we're not going to create any like interesting movies. Oh, we're just going to get a bunch of no name yeah, actors they, and shows that nobody did, asked for. Awesome. What uh, what what uh, D- Disney Plus did? Disney Plus knew they were coming out with Disney Plus. They shut Netflix the fuck down. You can't make no more Punisher seasons. You can't make no more Dare. And these were yeah. great shows. These were great shows. And Disney's like, nope. We're going to take our ball back to our court, and we're going to play over here with that. Y'all need to figure out whatever game y'all want to play over here, but we're taking it. And that's what Disney, they should have did. Like, they still want to have these these half-assed network shows when and, and, and at the same time try to sell people. Oh, oh, on well, DC's too big. DC's too big for its own britches, though. Yeah. That's the problem. It's too, it's way too big for its own britches, and it spread itself out. But like, and I know there are problems with the DC universe. But like, some of the things they try to do was they supplemented and saying, "Oh, you can get these comics on here too," which is like, uh, but man, there's shows that they've had in there, and I'm trying to give them more props because I feel like there's more potential. But man, I I was hooked when I saw Titans episode one and two. I was like, I'm done. This is awesome, you know. No, I'll, I'll and, give and, it, I'll and, give and 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 I'll say this again. I'll say this again. DC animated movies are the best thing that they're doing right now. Absolutely the best thing. Minus Batman having sex with Batgirl, but that's a whole different thing. Um, it's the best <laughs> thing they're doing, okay? I, I understand that. I'll give you that. You know, But to say that we have some of the most iconic characters in fictional writing, period, and we've had them for 100 years, and in 100 years, all we've figured out how to do is make a good fucking few cartoons. Uh, it's pretty fucking sad, man. <laughs> It's pretty. It's pretty sad. <laughs> to be to be fair, Flash and Arrow season one and two are both pretty good. That's but after that, that's where things start getting a little iffy. They run out of steam. There's just too many episodes. Right, right. And, and you're just gonna what? 
suck through another 24 hours of season three and then season four. Like, you know, you just can't, you just got to quit. And that's what I did. I I, I've seen season one and two of Arrow. I watched like the first, some like 13 episodes of Legends. And I, and every episode I would turn it on and I think, why am I doing this to myself? This is so terrible. But I, I wanted to, I just wanted to be a part of it. And I just, I had to quit. Like I said, I'm, I'm a, I'm a, I'm firm out of, of whatever DC is doing on TV now. Ah, DC, I'm so sorry. Cause like Legends is a show that you watch when you're doing something else, you know? Yeah. Like sleeping. <laughs> like sleeping. <laughs> hey, I will, I will say the crossovers are usually at least the last three, I would say have been really well done as far as a, like a full story, a beginning, a middle and an ending. And it all having some semi consequences. So I've I've never really been into crossovers. Like I don't want to have to watch a show that I don't like or don't care to watch just to piece in some of the storyline of a show I already already watch. Like they they do that. Shonda Rhimes does that shit with Grey's Anatomy and all her other medical shows all the time. <sighs> like yeah. I I prefer the way kind of like Marvel's Agent of Shield did it. So they had a, a running storyline going, and then Civil War came out in the theater on Friday. The next episode of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. reflected everything that happened in Civil War with, with Hydra and this and that. So they timed out their, the airing of their seasons to coincide with a movie, but you didn't have to necessarily watch the movie to know what was going on in the TV show or watch the TV show to know what was going on in the movie. They were still kind of like independent, but still were, were married in a, in a, you know, some sort of fashion. I prefer it that way. Okay. Okay. Um, all right. So this is a good t- place for us to take a break. Uh, we're going to play a quick commercial and then um, we're going to get back and play one's got to go. And I got a couple no, one's got to go you for you guys. You need to read the email, dude. <laughs> Eh, we'll see how it goes. It might. We'll, find, we'll see how it goes. We'll see how I feel after the break. We'll think about it. We'll be right back. Are you starving for comics? Do you covet the classics or the newest copies of our favorite comics? Ooh, that all-star Superman, Watchmen, and remember the Sandman? Heroes and Dragons can remedy that. They've been around for more than 30 years with the homegrown family atmosphere. Who's doing it like that? Marvel, DC, collectibles, toys, it doesn't matter. They have what you want. Go see them. Ask for York. Heroes and Dragons, located at 1807 Bush River Road, Columbia, South Carolina. Tell them to find Life Sent you. All right, and we are back. Make sure you definitely check out Heroes and Dragons if you're in the Columbia, South Carolina area. Ask for York and tell them the Five Life sent you. They will definitely get you right with all your nerd gear, comics, collectibles, any and everything you're looking for. Definitely check them out. All right, so now a little one's got to go. So, gentlemen, um, the rules are one of these has got to go. I usually have four, but I'm only going to give you three choices. I'm going to make it harder. This is for beating me up. All right. (laughs) All right. One's got to go. Comic book movies, comic book TV shows, or comic books. <laughs> mm, <that's... clears throat> so I'll never get rid of the books. Um, I'm a collector at heart. I like having issues. I like the fact that they go up and down in value. You don't get a kind of, there's no resale value for a TV show or a movie. So the books got to stay. It is a toss up between the movies and the TV shows because I like I like running plots. You know what I mean? Stories that take multiple episodes to to carry through things that happen in season 2 that affect things that happen in season 5. Like I like those long drawn out plots. Um but I you do love the epicness of the movies, so I I probably get rid of the TV shows um just cuz the uh, no TV show in comic book uh, form has really kind of hit like Game of Thrones level of production and things like that. So until the TV shows really kind of hit that that epic kind of level of production and storytelling that the movies have, I, I got to keep the movies. I got to do it. it I, for, for all the reasons that you said the TV shows were good is why I'll get rid of the movies. 
is those I, I love a good story that has time to breathe and has time to be told. And we're now moving into like really a golden age of TV where there's so much competition in TV. The production level so high. You see it with Think of the Boys. You see it with Game of Thrones. You see what they could do with source material now that they weren't doing, you know, a decade ago. And I'd rather see where TV is going to keep going and allow the source material from the comics to be able to be in this long form than the, the two and a half hour movie that's just going to try to appeal to everybody. Like what we're seeing, the direction movies are going. Is a direction yeah, I don't want to I be mean, part of. No, the direction right. TV's you're going right. is where I want to see it. If if we're taking every movie towards Captain Marvel Endgame kind of yeah. style, then then the movies can get the fuck just, out of my house. Just make make everybody happy. You can't upset anybody. Just just do three hours of hey, bring everybody to the theater and and just shut up their brain. Now I'd rather think about plot lines for for twenty hours and watch a, an actual TV series through it, its completion. So mm-hmm. movies are gone. Okay. Yeah, so just give me just give me more three hour movies. <laughs> just, just make them just make them like the first half, not the second half of Infinity. Um, hey, I, I'm going to tell you, um, I, I think exactly for what Ken said, the movies if it has it has to be anything because you're not going to get rid of my books because I, I appreciate my books and the books were the were the gateway into everything else for me too, so. I, I, I want to keep the comic book TVs because, man, uh, just from the boys, everything is just starting to get good, I think. And, and I feel like if there were no more comic book movies, it would kind of push the television producers and developers to make good stuff, you know? And so, yeah, that's, I, 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 you, can, you can toss the movies away, um, get... We'll, we'll keep our comic book uh, TV shows. Okay, okay. I'll um, I'll just be the different one then, since you guys are all going with. Uh... <laughs> just, no, just to be contrary, dude. <laughs> just a little motherfucker right here. What's he going to say? What's he going to say? It, it is with your heart, not with <laughs> not, not with just being Mister Mister Contrary, dude. You know, since you guys all picked the movies, I, I'm a I'm a I'm gonna pick the TV shows, and here's why. Oh, and I kept the books. Good for you. Yeah, oh yeah, I'm definitely keeping the books. Yeah, hey, look, I'm definitely keeping the books. I'm not that crazy. I'm not that crazy. But I'm gonna keep the TV shows and or I'm gonna get rid of the TV shows. And here's why: we just talked about with the arrows and the flash and Legends of Tomorrow how it's so bloated. You know, you get maybe ten to twelve really good episodes out of a season normally, and the rest of it is just filler episodes that you don't need. When you could just have like an hour and a half movie of Arrow in that same ver even the flash in that same version and it'd probably be a lot better than having to watch thirty two episodes. <laughs> DC is gonna make every T V show. <laughs> like yeah. Punisher yeah. Well, phenomenal. And, and, Daredevil phenomenal. Like, well that that's what I was saying. We're, we're in the golden age of T V the golden age of television shows is no longer on T V. It's in your streaming devices. Yeah. Yeah. The the C the C W is still pandering to the 30 second commercial spots and making these stupid long seasons 20 something episode seasons that they just can't you can't write quality enough for it oh, but yeah, the, that, the golden age of tv is going to exist in these 8 to 10 episode seasons come up on my netflix i'm gonna punch somebody in the mouth like i, I'm, I, can't, I can't wait for that show yeah so that, that's that's where where i i have the faith in the tv is is outside of traditional television channels no lo- no more 20 episode seasons 8 to 10 8 to 12 episode seasons on a streaming service where they do actually focus on writing and, and, and actual production. And I think the the big thing, too, is that actors are starting to recognize that now, too. So you got Meryl Streep that just did the HBO show, um, Big Little Liars. You, mm-hmm. have, you have these major award-winning you know, movie actors that a decade ago, two decades ago, wouldn't be caught dead on a television set, you know, are now all migrating to these really good character developing <clears throat> long plot line just great write it written tv shows so but but i mean tv isn't at the same level as movies movies are still dominating in production and in yeah. the art of of telling a story but like you said if 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 they if we base it on the trajectory that movies are kind of going down in our mm-hmm. in my eyes and tv's on its way up it is. It is safe to to get rid of movies. Also, it's it's a coin flip for me at this point. 
And my cheap ass has still got like a 720p TV from like 15 years ago, so I can't even see that higher quality from a movie. It doesn't matter to me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're talking you're to talking the cheapest man on the planet. Uh, <laughs> All right. Frugal. Uh, it's frugal. It's fine. I got, I got one more one's got to go. Uh, this one's going to be locations. Oh, I so, can't wait to hear this one. One of these has got to go. It was never created, which probably means the character with it was also never created. Don't say Narnia, regular Scott. I'm nah, out. no, no, no Narnia, no Middle Earth, none of that. <laughs> Asgard, Atlantis, oh my God. and Wakanda. Dude, <laughs> Asgard, Atlantis, and Wakanda. Yes. yes, those are the three. One of them has got to so go. So you're losing Namor, Black Panther, or Thor. Pretty, and, and, and and you know what, Atlantis works both ways because the fish need a little help. So Aquaman's yeah, wow. going too. Atlantis, Atlantis. Fuck them water breathers. I don't give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> that was quick. <laughs> and the deep. Shout out you to the deep. You ain't getting rid of my boy Thor. So I just had a, a second kid, and I was hoping it was a boy because my girlfriend's blonde. And if I'd have had a blonde, blue-eyed son, his middle name was going to be Mjolnir. I swear on I swear on everything, son. Like, um, man. wait, oh, wait, wait, hold on, wait, hold on, Steve. Your girlfriend was cool with that too, because that's a cool girl. Man. Oh, no, 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 oh, no, 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 well, I, wait, you can still be, do me on your, but it's just, it's different. It's Jane Foster. Daughter, Jane man, Foster. Do you think I am? I love my kids. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, Ken, where are you at on it? <sighs> I, I, I'm going the same way. I, I, I'm just getting rid of Atlantis. I, I, I don't think any of the, the interesting stories come from the water. Even the deep, whatever, came in his gills and sent him away. <laughs> yeah. Dude. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I we uh, just don't as, don't you, as you mentioned don't on your show, straws and six pack rings. Fuck them all. I don't care. <laughs> yeah, hey, hey, Ken, Steve, as you mentioned on your show, Aquaman was the biggest joke up until Jason came around. The deep was just is a conflicted person. If they're producing these kind of people, maybe Atlantis isn't the best place to be. Oh, are, are, we, are, are we going to start defending the sex offender here? Because I'm, no, no. I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> you go walk that line yourself, homie. You know, you know, like, <laughs> like uh, uh, if you come from Atlantis and like your first thing is you try and get you try and get a blowjob from the innocent little superhero, you know, or you can talk. To, you're not special because you can talk to fish. Big deal, you know. So uh, Atlantis can go, man. Because I, I tell you, you're not going to get rid of Wakanda, okay? Yeah, no. Nope. I'm just, nope. I'm just I'm saying. I'm not going to be the white dude that comes on your show. And yeah, hey, 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 I may res- be dumb, but I ain't that dumb guy. <laughs> and respect to the Vikings. Respect to the respect to the Vikings. The God Butcher was the only person that ever destroyed um, Asgard. So we'll leave it at that. You know, we're not gonna, <clears throat> you know. <laughs> All right, so, so we got we got three for Atlantis. Um, so um, you know, you know oh, how wait, I like on. to do. Wait, wait. Regular Scott is going to say, "I'm getting rid of. I'm getting. I'm going to get rid of Wakanda and Asgard." Here it comes. So I, uh, you know, I'm going I'm to go ahead and get rid of Wakanda, and um, oh, I'm just oh, playing. Dude. I'm just playing. I'm just playing. Wow. Yeah. I'm just joking. <laughs> Atlanta, Atlantis is gone. You know, I, I just Atlantis is gone. You've convinced me. I can't even. I can't even begin. To pick one of the other two now. Yeah, like it. It really wasn't even like a choice. Like, yeah, there, uh, there was nothing. The Asgard is like the. Sh- <laughs> yeah, like I mean, you can't. There's no way you're getting rid of Thor, and there's no way you're getting rid of Black Panther. And it's not like Namor or Aquaman, whoever rendition you want to. I stick with Marvel just because the first two characters are from Marvel, so I, I just associated it with Namor. And you're, you're talking about a dude that just perpetually tries to bang another dude's wife. Like, dude, all he ever does. Dick, son. <laughs> Steve, all he ever says is imperious Rex and tries to get on Sue all the time, all dude. All the time. Like, hey, but let's, let's keep it 100, though. Sue be playing the game. 
Oh yeah. Let's keep oh, it one hundred. playing. Sue is, about Sue is it? like Steph Curry's wife of Marvel. <laughs> 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 Let me get a little bit of that spotlight, hubby. <laughs> <laughs> You know, and, and Reed Richards is definitely Steph Curry, or Steph Curry just shaking his head like, I want no part of this. And and, 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 and also, if we're going to like, tell the truth, the only reason Namor is in the Illuminati is so that Reed Richards can keep track of him. That's the only reason. Well, and I mean, the, the world is covered in 75% water. So, like, he does kind of have the, the most of Earth you know, under his realm. So but the, the dude, point the dude that rules over seventy five percent of the known planet, you might want to be friends with. <laughs> yeah, well, well, no, no, no. But see, here's the here's the whole thing. You you rule over seventy percent of the planet, but you're still chasing after this woman. Are you that? You you're not that busy. You, I, I would imagine being so busy. Bum. <laughs> you know, I was like, how do you have time to do all this? Yeah, I. There must be something about that that force field. I don't know. I just, <laughs> it's, it's being invisible. Clean for the kiddos. <laughs> <laughs> um, and also, not just Thor. You cannot get rid of Odin. That's the whole shit. The yeah. All Father. So I'm just saying. Yeah. Shout but, out but, to Aquaman. Shout out to Aquaman. That's, I'm just like, yeah. I'm a big Aquaman guy. I like what Jason did with him. You would be. What, like, what, what, what did he do? <laughs> he did good. He, he was not a joke in that movie. He made some I, jokes. I, that was, that was a, a secondary, uh, another goal I had in the back of my head. I said, by the end of the episode, I'm hoping to be regular Scott's, like, arch nemesis. I want to be your Dr. Doom. <laughs> like, when we, when, we get, when, we, when we get off this Skype call, I want you shaking your fist at the sky. No! <laughs> <laughs> My my last words will be until we meet again. That would that would be my last words. <laughs> true that. You true that. Bring, you gotta bring in Doctor Doom to your side every once in a while because you just can't function without him, you know. But you know he's the bad guy. But he's the bad guy you gotta work with. Uh, that's 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 gonna be me. Long yeah. as we're not in the Josh Trank movie, I'm cool with it. <laughs> I, I, I am I am 100% down with it So I do want to ask you guys about um, Phase 4 since we're on Doctor Doom and stuff like that um, Do you think We are eventually going to get a Doctor Doom Or do you think he's somebody who they're just Going to kind of leave alone Oh a no good Marvel's not leaving Doom, any- Disney, yeah. Disney's not leaving anything alone Like there's, there's, <laughs> Everything is coming out in its, in its due time Doctor Doom's coming out. Phase four? No, I, I, I don't think. You know, maybe we'll get like an end credit scene or something that's going to hint towards what Phase five is. Uh, with that, that might, you know, hint towards it, uh, Doctor Doom or Fantastic Four. But you know, he's coming out. It's just not Phase four. Yeah, I, I don't think they have enough time to to write it in, and they they still have the table set for a few other things. You know. One of my favorite villains of all time is Sinister, and they've been uh, hinting Essex Laboratories in every Deadpool movie since the start. So if they put out a Deadpool 3, now that Disney owns Fox, if they don't incorporate that and give me a Sinister, I'm throwing tomatoes at the screen. Yeah, dude, that would be awesome. Didn't the first class movies do that as well? Um, Did they invoke the Essex Laboratory? I know, like, he is like the under like the the behind the curtain villain in the Deadpool movies because they they make reference to his name in each movie i do enjoy mr sinister he's he's a, he's a very he I should he should have had a movie by now i'm actually looking at uh i bought i found it at comic con it was just like in a in a box and it was like finding a, a, a piece of gold it was a original cell from the 90s X-Men cartoon of Sinister standing there laughing. So, like, in in a frame on my wall right now is, is like, a, the cell of Sinister from the 90s X-Men cartoon. Actual used. It's, like, one of my prized possessions. That, that, was, that, was a, that, that was a good that was a good cartoon, too, by the way. Um, yeah. More of, <clears throat> but, no, it, Sinister is awesome movie. With Sinister, good Lord, man. Like, Madeline at a sinister. He he's like a, people always get to apocalypse. So sinister's a real crazy dude. 
you know? our only fear with phase four is if they're going to keep kind of shoving down messages of societal corrections down our throat rather than just telling a good story and weaving it into a story captain um, marvel it, yeah if if <laughs> If they if they keep down that road, which Far From Home didn't really go there, so I, I was really happy with how that played out, um, you know. But but Endgame had a few of those those bits in there. Captain Marvel was just man, it was brutal for me. Um, if if they keep trying to, you know, tell me how to think in these movies, I don't know if I you know am gonna feel Phase Four that much. It's still. I told I told Ken I was like you know this is the point where Marvel could jump the shark. You know if they don't handle these next two phases well, this could be the point where people are just stop caring. I don't see how they will because I, I would as I've been saying, Disney with all of their acquisitions are just like straight up trying to own people's childhood, whether it be from Disney fairy tales, um, Star Wars to marvel there and and they're just unleashing stuff because they're just like we can profit off this it's about them making some profit so you know i still think there will have some good movies but at the at the end of it man they're just like damn endgame did what oh let's unleash the kraken dude go for it you know so well, it is very diversified in this next coming up phase, at least with like Shang Chi coming, and I, which is one I'm which really is looking be awesome. forward to. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to Shang Chi. I think that's going to be very different. We'll probably get a real Mandarin, which will be nice instead of the Abomination, which was Iron Man three. But that's another story. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't, I don't think very much is going to. I think Phase Four is going to be just a bunch of standalone movies. They're going to be loosely interconnected but for the most part phase four it's kind of like who talks about phase one and two who talks about oh well in right. phase one they accomplished this in phase two they accomplished this nobody nobody really delineates those phases nobody started talking about phases until we were prepping for phase three and then so, yeah i think it's phase gonna four is gonna be just origin. like that it's gonna be the origin phase so they can introduce a bunch of new characters sell a bunch of new toys mm-hmm. sell, sell a bunch of new halloween costumes like it's gonna be <laughs> like that's the thing is is like there you can only you're only gonna buy how many Captain America shields in your life? You know what I mean. <laughs> like it's true. They need to. They need to bring in more. Hulk smash more glo- um, gloves. Yeah. You know things like that. So I think you're going to get a whole bunch of of new characters, new origins, so they can yeah in phase five and six start laying the groundwork for either a, a secret invasion story, a secret wars, um, something along those lines. Girls, you can get a you can get yourself a pink Thor's hammer, by the way. So, you know. I'm a big Natalie Portman fan. I'm 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 gonna keep my mouth shut till that actually hits the screen. Let's see I'm, what she does, man, but that's gonna I'm be- a I'm a big <laughs> Natalie Portman fan. Natalie Portman might have been my least favorite part of those first two Thor movies. Really? I yeah. thought she was I thought she did pretty good. Well she, she was fine. Like I don't I, I mean she was fine. She didn't really do anything for me yeah i, I thought the same thing i i didn't think she it's not like she had some some great part in it she did she did what she needed to do but i, I think any any actress could have done i it. think she did i what i thought she did well was was play the 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 female the, like the normal female role she wasn't too like damsel in distress but she wasn't too um you know Miss thing about it either you know it was she played a good kind of like help me when i need help but i'm also going to try to do things on my own i don't need every like she was she was a strong woman but vulnerable at the same time which i think thor played well into telling thor's kind of story and then and then she held disney by the nuts until they said said okay we'll give you the hammer and she'll come back right and she just dis- then she just disappears until she gets to her her moment to shine uh so I, I think it's good. It, hopefully they do it well. Hopefully, hopefully they tell that story well. You know, maybe Disney's still going to get their dig at her and, and treat it like the comics and make her like this decrepit, cancer-ridden person. Y'all better leave Padme alone. Y'all better leave Padme alone. That would be Y'all better leave Padme alone. Padme. Shout out to Padme. Shout out Jar Jar Binks, man. 
<laughs> man, shout out to the professional, man. Shout out to the professional, absolutely. <laughs> shout out to Black <laughs> Swan. You ever leave Black Swan alone, dude? <laughs> Good boy, man. All right, so let me let me put you two on the spot then. If you're if you're DC right now, and I mean Marvel's kicking on all cylinders. They got the TV shows Kill coming myself. out. Kill myself. You can stop talking. Kill myself. <laughs> <laughs> Give him a sword. <laughs> hey, regular Scott, give Steve a sword, and, I, and we'll, we'll be right behind to make sure he follows through in, in the tradition. Okay. Let's say you're let's say you're immortal, so you can't even do that. <laughs> let's let's say you have that ability. Let's say you're pretty much Deadpool. You can't even do that. You're you're Vandal Savage, and so what would you do too? <laughs> so, you know, they're kicking on all cylinders. TV shows, movies. Do you focus in on your movies or do you focus in on creating a better TV show universe and maybe just putting a lot of content on the DC uh, universe app? Like, where do you put your focus in to try to combat this? Because Marvel is think, kicking your ass, dude. Yeah. It, honestly, in today's world, you, you, you've got to go. You've got to go with movies, but they, they, they have to put somebody in charge, kind of like what Marvel's got as far as like, you know, Kevin Feige is the master of all continuity and he keeps keeps everything in a, in a right direction. They, they've got to find somebody who can yeah. actually have longer vision than a single mm-hmm. movie. They got to give and, like, and they gotta give like Ridley Scott a Billy. Just give Ridley Scott a Billy and fix us. Mm-hmm. And it, it has to be somebody like you almost have to treat kind of like what you know you you see with like game of thrones guys the game of thrones showrunners getting 200 million from netflix just just because of their ability to craft a long-term story like right you gotta you gotta hire almost like a tv showrunner to come up with your movie slate somebody who can look at at depth and look at not three hours well, not two hours but look at the, the next 40 hours part of of dc they've been owned by wb for for 40 years they could have been doing this shit with keaton batman i yeah. know I know they had a movie studio. They but had always been, everything in place. They could have DC been doing treat, this shit since Keaton. They treat almost every movie as its own isolated money grab. That, and, exactly. and because of that, and because of that, they they don't they they lack continuity. They lack vision. They're quick to just to just ditch what they've done in the past and reset every two every second movie. And, and it's they have to hire somebody. That's really what they have to do. Well, is they have to hire somebody who has. Long term vision, like a showrunner from a, a Game of Thrones, to or every like that. audience either. Like I feel like they have too much of a corporate vision. Where when they make these movies, they're like, we need we need certain scenes to speak to this audience. We need to like they try to make the Super Bowl halftime show of movies every time. And what's the worst part of the Super Bowl? The fucking halftime show. <laughs> You know, every so every like, so they 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 literally they're like, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna bring in, we're gonna... <laughs> shout out, <laughs> shout out to the goat man, Tom Brady, no bears, no bears, no bears. So, Buffalo they, Bills, I let's go. They, they have too much of a corporate mindset where they're trying to make movies for everybody rather than their audience. Like, find your audience, speak to that audience, and if you make good movies for that audience people will people will come in but they start making these movies trying to get in the demographic and, and this and that and that's that's not a way to, to to create content yeah i think that's a way to like line your line your like we were walled up <clears throat> but they could have they could have had a freaking justice league movie it could have been shitty but they could have had a justice league movie in the 90s they could have did a whole bunch of the shit but i agree it's typical. That's why I always say, like they they should just go. We hey, fucking lost the movie. Not game. having Michael Keaton and Christopher Reeves in the same movie. Fuck them. Well, well, I'll say this. They they always. You they, tell me you put Reeves and Keaton in a movie that isn't like we're we, like shit. We're still talking about today as well, like, the know. most epic comic book thing you've ever seen in your life. But uh, there's no vision. You know, they we, they could easily and we could have found a Wonder Woman back then too. We could have found all that shit, man. They just don't. Hey, Linda Carter. Linda well, Carter. We had a Wonder Woman. Well, we had, I know. I know. But I was just like, yeah, we could have brought her back and said, boom. They would have loved that shit, dude. You know, they got to just finish out and go, look, we suck at our movies. We're we're real. We're really good at our animated shit. Maybe we just need to focus on our animated. Yeah, shit. Let's just let's be. Yeah, the next, let's be the next tsunami. 
Dude, dude, adult swim, but with D- DC Adult Swim there. <laughs> if if that if that's the what they the boat they want to sail on, good for them. You know, we only we only shit the bed in every other medium possible. Dude, they got nothing else because they they can't they can't do another movie. What's the next movie they're going to do? Even every even every anything. cartoon isn't done right. I went and saw a Killing Joke in the theater. I walked out and threw my popcorn at the wall. Like that, that that cartoon was was straight garbage. We yes we yes we know why it was. We speak on that movie a good amount. We speak on that a good amount. That's just just one of the worst decisions I've ever seen when it comes to Batman. I I I was done as soon as he was like on the rooftop with his like tights down. I was like, oh wait, you shouldn't do that to Barbara because Jim's not going to be like that at all. Do that to Barbara. I pay. Hey, I paid. Listen, I paid money to see the, the theater. I was mad. You was you, like, you should get your money mad. back because because Jim and Dick are like Bruce. We need to talk to you, dude. Man, man, you know Dick Grayson is always getting shafted in these DC stuff, man. Like it's just it's ridiculous. Unless it's Titans. <laughs> well, well, I'm, I'll ta- get, I'm gonna get on that. Well, I guess we didn't sell you guys too well on the DC universe because <laughs> didn't sound. Yeah, like no. It. I don't. I don't. Hey, I don't. I Rick, think this is another Endgame situation where you you may have talked yourself down a little bit from it too. <laughs> regular Scott, regular Scott, Ken and Steve are gonna they, they're they're gonna take ten dollars and buy lottery tickets, dude. They're not gonna spend that money on DC Universe. No, no. Nope. Uh, yeah, I got I got Disney Plus coming out in a couple months. Well, to be fair, at least you are getting Titans. Titans is a good show. I, I do think you'll enjoy Titans. It's a little different, more violent. Honestly, what my favorite thing DC does is I watch Teen Titans go with my daughter every day, and that's some of the funniest shit. And I love sitting there with my, with my daughter and watching Teen Titans go. And and, T, and Teen Titans and Teen Titans Go will be a movie that's coming out too. So I, I, didn't, I didn't say and. I said Teen Titans Go, and I said <laughs> hey, and I said hey. it. <laughs> hey, Teen Titans! Hey, Teen Titans is my show, and I'm just saying, um, and I can't wait for that movie to come out because I will be there watching that. Not even your kid don't even want to see that. You just going? No, <laughs> hey, dude, dude, hey, my my kid, he he loves Teen Titans Go. He loves Teen Titans, and he loves Young Justice too. It's crazy. Young Justice is solid, but we 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 already spoke about the animated game. Yeah, I mean. If they want to just market to people who like cartoons, have fun. DC, you like? I would consider that a failure in life. Yeah, but Steve, they got nothing left, dude. Their movies are just like they that's can't like, do that's anything. Like, that's like when Kramer takes Taekwondo classes with yeah, the little kids and just, thinks he's thinks he's boss. That's that's like essentially, if they settled on cartoons, that's what they're doing. And the thing is, just because just because they've they've messed it up, the 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 thing is, the nerds. We're still gonna go see the next movie when they reset it again. When they <laughs> when they reset it again, because the, the truth is, it's it's still a shame. Like if you tell you go walk down the street and you pick ten people and you tell them, hey, quickly name off three superheroes. Batman, and Superman are coming in those in two of the three. Absolutely, every time, right? Nine out of ten of those people are gonna put Batman and Superman in their top top three, because they still have the name recognition. They still have two of the best superheroes that that are out there. Yeah. So when they reset it. Everybody's just going to hope that, okay, they learn from their seven other failures that this one's going to be the one. And it, it hopefully, I, I mean, I hope they write the ship somewhere along the way. Um, I mean, they're about to reset it again. We got our sparkly Batman, you know, Robert Pattinson coming out, and we'll, we'll see what. Now, listen, see what he when, can do. when Batman comes out in the sun, he does glisten like, like diamonds. So just remember that. It's going to be fine. Yeah. But, you know, I think that's, I think that kind of attributes to the problem when it comes to DC movies is we're just we recycle this I mean they're we're recycling the same characters you know we've had three different bat four different Batmans maybe five three different Supermans I know one of them wasn't you know wasn't his fault but we've still had rebooted Superman three or four different times and it looks like we're probably going to end up doing it again with Marvel you know they're I mean they took Iron Man like Iron Man was popular in the comics but he wasn't as popular as like a probably incredible yeah. Hulk you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And they, they made him the face. So then it was like, okay, if we can do it with Iron Man, we can take some of these lesser known to an extent characters and build them up. And, you know, that's what the they did. That I think they that's made what Guardians of the do. Galaxy show the balls there you they go. had. There yeah. you go. Like, exactly. No, that's, that's exactly right. Like, the Guardians of the Galaxy is a perfect example of that. Like, 
I'm gonna be honest. I didn't even know who they were, but when the movie was announced, and I had to go and kind of look them up and see what they were about. So that's a perfect. And that's example. the thing is they're doing it again with the Eternals. I have the Eternals comics. They're actually mm-hmm. not like that interesting, um, but <laughs> but they're gonna they're gonna they got all these stars and they're gonna put out an Eternals movie, and I I guarantee you it's not gonna be bad. You know, like I, I they'll find a way to use you know these these characters in the MCU. Uh, to, to benefit the, the main arc. So I'm, I'm actually excited to see how they use it because I didn't quite enjoy the comics, but mm-hmm. they want to take another number one I have and, and quadruple the value. I'm, <laughs> I'm about that life. <laughs> I am all about that life. You know, speaking of Eternals, I think, I feel like they casted a lot of big names for that movie. One, because it's a lesser known comic. And two, I don't think they're as confident in that movie. I also think a lot of people are one in on, the, you know, like if you're a major Hollywood star right now, are you not sitting at home going, I want to play? Like, <laughs> Where's my superhero movie? Who can I be? I want to be somebody. Like, yeah, you know, I want, I want kids wanting to be me. Like, I want a toy. I want to go to Comic Con and make money and yeah. just cash money every, you know, when I go. Come on. The, the day they get Leonardo DiCaprio to play a Marvel villain is the day that we know they ate everything. Leonardo yeah. <laughs> DiCaprio and Denzel Washington are the two people I'm waiting to cross over to the comic book world. <laughs> those yeah. are those are the two I'm waiting for. Yeah. You know, the closest we've gotten as far as comic book stuff for me with Denzel was Book of Eli. And I, I personally, I really yeah. enjoyed him in Book of Eli. So I, I would like to see, and I personally want him to be a villain. I know he won't be, but I th- I'd want him to be a villain. Well, um, we'll, what about uh, we'll get Brad Pitt in for something, huh? Are we? Brad Pitt's like, I want my turn too, dude. (laughs) He was he was the Vanisher in Deadpool. Yeah, (laughs) Yeah, he is. He was. He has made his way in. He has made his way in. Come on, Oz. Come on, Oz. (laughs) He's a comic connoisseur, not the movie connoisseur. Where, 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 where's where's my beer? Oh yeah, that's right. Uh, All right, so. I'm going to read one email from Steph Blurdy, then we'll do our final blows, and then um, we're going to wrap up. So here's, but only, here's, it, only if it's super negative about you, though, right? Well, I, I feel like Steph Blurdy – okay, here we go. Hey, guys. <laughs> Uncle Oz, I'm enjoying STD-S9, which I'm assuming is Star Trek Deep Space Season 9. Oh. Don't assume. Don't assume. That's or exactly discovery. I don't. I'm not a trekkie. It, it, so. it, it, it's Star Trek Deep Space Nine. Okay. Whatever. I'm not a trekkie. <laughs> Steve Ken, are you guys trekkies? No. That no. that ship sailed on me. I, I I would be a trekkie if I had 300 hours of my life to go get caught I up. I like the movies. <laughs> See, I'm with you on that. I like the movies. I'm not about the TV. But you guys are Star Wars fans, though. I have Darth Vader tattooed on my hands. Yes, sir. Are you, are you, uh, is Sith Lord? I have Sith Lord tattooed across my knuckles. I have Anakin. I have Anakin when he goes full Sith on my right hand, and then Darth Vader's helmet on my left. So wait, Steve, I, I, I'm not understanding. Are you a fan of Star Wars? Is what I asked. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, it is. That's awesome. All right. Yeah, what... I went. I went gangster with it. All right, so we don't have. I'm glad, so I'm glad Uncle Oz is the only Trekkie. Perfect. Uh, hey, 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 I'm, hey, I'm, I'm going to my local tattoo shop tomorrow, man. I'm getting, I'm gonna get my, on my knuckles too, man. We can yeah, represent yeah. too, son. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> my favorite character is Captain Benjamin Sisko, and my least favorite character is Doctor McCoy from the original Star Trek. I'm glad that what? you like the boys. I'm hooked and can't wait to start reading the comic. Regular Scott, do you know the difference between Sam Wilson becoming Captain America and Dick Grayson never becoming Batman? One is always a sidekick. For example, (laughs) I know, man, I know. For example, Steve Rogers passes the torch to Sam Wilson because he trusts him enough to become Captain America. Does Bruce Wayne trust Dick Grayson enough to leave the fate of Gotham in his hands? Nope. Even when he becomes Nightwing, Batman basically tells him he can do all that, but he has to do it in another city. Instead Damn. of staying in Gotham and standing up to Batman, Nightwing disappears like V's from the podcast, never oh, to be shit. heard from again. So I'll say this again. Once a sidekick, always a sidekick. <laughs> Lastly, 
What are your wow. opinions on the Masters of the Universe series since it is officially DC Comics? Stay nerdy, my blurdy, Steph Blurdy. Wow. That was deep, dude. That was very deep. I'm always um, taking some abuse somehow. Yeah, but, but, you know, I think you have to be kind of legit about this. You know, look, when Batman, even when, like, Darkseid zapped Batman... Alfred's like you have to be Batman. It's not. It's not like Bruce was like, "I'm giving you this because you've earned it." It's like you got to do it because no one else is around. He's got a good point, dude. Okay. All right, um, Stephen King. Let me ask you guys: How do you feel about Dick Grayson in Nightwing as a character? Um, I've enjoyed it. It's they 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 do horrible storytelling at DC. I don't think they use the character. As well, because I mean, the Robins got to grow up. You can't uh, you be a kid always. So, what do you do with these characters when when time goes by and you have to kind of pass the torch and things like that? And yeah, I don't know. They, I think they just lack vision for for a, a character with potential. And they're scared. They're, they're they're scared because they're like, look, Bruce Wayne is Batman. Just leave it like that. They're scared to go. Well, Bruce Wayne can still do his thing. They try to do what Batman incorporated, but why not just let Dick do his thing too? It's just they ever they just are used to what they know will work. So, and, and I can't speak intelligently on this at all. So I'll just uh, back off. <laughs> True that. Um, Masters of the Universe. Are either of you familiar with that? Some He Man, He Man, Dolph Lundgren. Style, like, yeah. <laughs> um, well, I, I personally used to watch the TV show, um, well, the cartoon, and um, oh, Dolph, yeah, Dolph. I had I had all every toy, and yeah, I watched the the, the cartoon <laughs> religiously, and yeah, I actually enjoyed that movie as a child. I'm not gonna lie, it it was good, man. And, but that's that. My knowledge is some nostalgic childhood memory of, of He-Man toys. Well, I, I, I know I still, they tried I, to reboot the toy line um, once. Uh, did they do an, another animated version? I think they did. Yeah, they did a second animated they version. They did, and they did a, they did a rebooted um I want to say that, that the Skeletor toy that was updated for that second version was actually pretty dope. Um, I, um, I had Battle Cat. Um, I, I did, I did like my, uh, what was that? What was the guy that had the three different faces that you could turn the head? Oh, um, I can't remember. Man, my buddy Steve's going to kill me. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I actually, I saw, so I got a tiger tattooed on my shoulder when I was in college. It's fading really bad. And I want to do a, uh, like a eighties ch childhood kind of sleeve on my left arm. So I'm going to have the tiger turned into a battle cat with, a. He Man standing next to it eventually. Is it just all eighties like cartoons or eighties? Yeah, stuff? I'm gonna do so the four I wanna do is He Man. I wanna have uh Lino looking through the eye of Thundera yes. and uh, a sound wave and a Voltron. Definitely oh. shout out to Thundercats. <laughs> hey wait, hey, wait, so which Vol Voltron uh, um Lions or Voltron cars? Lions. Man, <laughs> why are you asking? Why are you asking questions you should know the answer to? I know. So, you know, they did actually have a Voltron crossover. They had the cars and the lions, and they fought together for one episode. I don't know. And no one cared. And actually, see, this, it was actually really pretty good. I was deep, deep into Voltron, man. It was crazy. Yeah, like I like the the whole the vehicles um, run, the lions run. I, I had I had a three it. foot toy that that you could drive attached to a, a cord. Still, it wasn't even like it was before the days of wireless remote control vehicles. <laughs> like, so it, it was it, like it had like a three foot cord. You couldn't even like let it go. You had to like walk it like a dog. <laughs> but they had some dope lion ones though that the lions actually turned. Oh yeah, like they, the tails look, interconnected. Oh, yeah. so, yeah. I had all them. I had. All, I, I was a spoiled little kid. My grandma <laughs> bought us everything. Like I was eating macaroni and cheese every day at home. Cause but I had the latest toys. But my grandma bought all that shit. <laughs> I was more of a Power Ranger guy. 
Yeah, you were. You're, you're my younger brothers. Our younger brother's age. Then. Yeah. Our, our brother Sam was was heavy into Ninja Turtles and Power Rangers. Shout out, oh, Michelangelo. Dude, regular Scott was a heavy Ninja Turtle and Power Ranger dude, man. Yeah, yeah, I was. You put me on a Shout lot of stuff, Shout out to Usagi Ojibo. Right. <laughs> what was that? It's a shout out to Usagi Ojimbo. Absolutely. That's that's the dopest right. turtle character there is. All right. Well, guys, this has been uh it's been pretty good. I don't think we got too many bruises on us this time. Uh, I think I'm coming out it's a got... little bit taller than I did on the fight me. Yeah, you you know what, dude, you you yeah, you're okay. It was okay. No, we made, we made a bunch of DC fans mad though. I know that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But you probably got a lot of Cholo fans. Yeah, man, <laughs> shout outs, shout outs. Shout outs to everybody out there working on a low rider right now. You got Chewie on your side. Honey. Oh, snap. <laughs> All right. Final blow time. Um, Ken and Steve, what you, guys, uh, what you guys got for the final blow? Again, plug anything you want. And, um, yep, floor is yours. Yeah, just uh, anytime uh, you're looking for some some up to date movie reviews, uh, we do book reviews, a few board game reviews. We try to dabble all, a little bit in all the nerd culture. So you can head out over to the nerdcanteen.com and check us out. We have links to all our social media on there: our, our Twitters, our our Instagrams, Facebook group. Um, we have a private Facebook group or a closed Facebook group that we do a lot of conversation in at the nerdcanteen.com forward slash community. And then, uh, as always, the podcast, you know, the Nerd Cantina show, we, uh, we book some actually really interesting guests that uh, that will be airing in the next couple of weeks. Some really kind of deep societal conversations in the nerd mm-hmm. realm that, that people are going to want to check, kind of check out. So make sure you guys tune in. Yeah, and I'll just echo that. It, it, the, our main goal of the whole podcast thing in the first place is just to, to have a community, have, have shared people to, to, to talk to about what we're interested in. Uh, outside of Steve and I just making weekly phone calls to each other, so we 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 want we want hey if if you guys like this stuff hey give us give it a try over that the uh, over at the Facebook community uh, join give us a listen and uh, really we we'd be glad to have somebody else's perspective uh, kind of filtering in there. Yeah, we appreciate you guys having us on. It's always a, a good yeah. time. These are been these a lot are of fun conversations. No, this, this has been a lot of fun and. I will um, personally speak on their podcast. It's really good. Uh, I really enjoyed y'all's conversation about free will, actually. That's, I, we've been waiting for feedback for that because I wasn't sure if all that went over people's heads because that is some like really deep scientific, ph- ph- philosophical kind of stuff. And we, I've been waiting for like uh, a few comments or feedback on that because it's something me and him will we'll yell at each other about <laughs> any chance we get. <clears throat> Well, and, and you know what? I, I'm, I, I'll am i just give you my feedback here and just kind of plug that episode. I, I'm i kind of in the – where it is a little bit of a combination of the two. But I, I just feel like free will is if you make a decision, like that is the definition of free will, regardless of whether like your circumstances led you to that decision. Right. Yeah, but your but your decisions, your, regular Scott, your decision doesn't come out of something. It so I heard a, I heard a really good example for determinism that that Sam Harris dropped last week on his podcast that said, if you were to program a robot to to pick cereal and you programmed him to pick any cereal or the cereals that you programmed in there, that robot thinks he has a choice, but you programmed him to have those choices. So from the perception of the robot, he has a choice, but ultimately it was the subset program that was written into that robot that gave him A, the illusion of choice, and B, the the limited options that he actually had to choose from. So does that robot have free will? No, you program the parameters for that robot to, to work in. And if you look at it like that as our subconscious being the the mm-hmm. upper level of programming and God or whatever you want to call it being the the beginning programmer. We're just meat robots making the limited choices we have that appear to be free will, but the programming was already set for us to begin with. Whether you call it God or DNA. Um, yeah. Oh, whatever so hey, oh, oh, well, let me take <laughs> yeah. this. Let me take this. I will be listening to the free will one because I, I will just say, man, I've, of the three episodes that like I've been 
you guys talk about cool stuff, and I really want to. I think you guys brought on um, what, who's the doctor that you guys had on before too? About the kids and video games. Yeah, dude, so that's, that's really interesting, that's man. Doctor Rachel Court, and uh, and we're actually interviewing her again tomorrow, uh, okay. along with two other, yeah. along with two other PhDs from uh, TakeThis.org, and they're going to talk about a paper they published uh, that talks about how CD uh, the the video game industry is to employees and how they're they're so mistreated. Uh, within the video game industry, they they recently published a paper. They're gonna they're coming on with us tomorrow to talk about that. Yeah, so that's Dude, super interesting, to. man. Really cool too. Yeah, so, so no, yeah, we they, appreciate it. Oh yeah, no, and, and they they do a lot more than comics and stuff, and it's it's really good conversations. They make you think, and they they probably will go over your head, but we just got to keep up. That's how I look at it. <laughs> I mean, Sammy, you know, you know, we it, just it, got to keep up. <laughs> yeah, it was good, and I actually had to break out a dictionary for a couple of things. It was nice, you know. I had to. Test See, that's it our goal. Off, that's our goal cool. is to get you guys active and get in and, and get engaged. Because once you're breaking out, once you start Google searching and pulling out the dictionary, we we, we consider that a win. No, because like for me, on a like on a straight up like blurred tip for myself. When you guys started talking, I was like, oh, like, oh, let's, let's hear. They're coming on our show. Let's see. And I was like, I started getting a little giddy once you guys started talking about stuff. I was like, oh. Oh well, hey, yes. Hello. Okay. Yeah, no, it's that's cool, the goal. man. It's awesome. It was very cool. I, and I, yeah, and and also, I know, I know, it was our last final blow and all this stuff. But man, this on the social stuff, you know, the whole uh, video games are the reason why people were doing this, this, and this. You know, there have been excuses for stuff for people doing things without talking about that's the that's real hopefully true. one of the subjects the three yeah. doctors are going to hit up on tomorrow so we're going to talk about the video game industry but we're also going to try to pivot it into the the current you know tone of society trying to blame video games again for for everything that somebody does bad yeah yeah you know yeah i i, I seriously what you guys are doing it's super cool and it's awesome even when you're totally wrong about your opinions about what i'm saying it's fine oh that's, you're that's quite all right you're dead right about Sky, just, right about just Sky know Bell. I'm screaming yeah, at my yeah. I'm screaming at my radio it's, uh, every, every <laughs> Sunday, so it's just know that it's fine <laughs> well I, I I just I thought I'd let you know that in game has uh moved out of my top 10 I'll just throw that out there too there you go and I'm gonna so say much this. better Ken 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 and Steve when you guys said that in game, because like I was tearing up, I was crying. I'm telling you the truth, dude. That it got to me. But when you guys are saying like it was an awesome collection of moments, you're brilliant. That was just that, that. After you said that, I was like, "Fuck, yeah, okay, crap." You know, yeah, it was. Yeah, you you summed it up, dude. I was like, "Wow." All yeah, right, it was so. it was Marvel's pat on the back for ten years. Like, hey, remember yeah. we did this? Hey, remember when we did that? Watch yeah. it again. And- it was, let's let's ign- let's ignore how we get there. Let's ignore how we connect these moments. Uh, and yeah, so that was just so smart. It was it was genius. It was really cool. So, well, hey, appreciate the the, the kind words and, and appreciate you guys having us on. This was a ton. Yeah, this won't be the last time. We'll do some more of these eventually. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, definitely. That was definitely. fun, man. Oz, what you got for your final blow, or was that your final blow? Um. Uh, well, I guess no one had time to build an igloo or chop a tree. And down, we still but it's don't. Fine. And we still don't. Jeez. Okay. Well, um, final blow is uh, thank you guys, Ken Steve, for being on the show. Um, regular Scott, I'm going to be at the beach um, chilling, but um, you can hit me up. I'll be having some like uh, margaritas, but it's fine. Okay. If I don't answer the first time, regular Scott, at least call 10 other times. Though, okay. I'll pick up one of them. All right. Okay, dude. All right, sounds good. Um, uh, my final blow is again. We appreciate you guys being on. We will definitely have you back on again. This was a lot of fun. Real good conversation. Um, Oz. Oh, and De- I had, had an appearance on the uh, Defy Life podcast, so definitely check that out as well. Oz, tell everyone we talk to them next time. As usual, everybody. Peace and chicken grease. And y'all have a good time because we gonna have a good time until we talk to y'all next time. Peace. Yo, what up, my people? This is J.R. Glant from Defy Life. If you're looking for an in-depth, honest, at times hilarious conversation on anything from current events to sports to entertainment and more, check out myself, Alvin, Thomas, Gerald, and Yosh on the Defy Life podcast. Dropping every Wednesday, available at GoDefyLife.com and everywhere your favorite podcasts are available. And as always... 
If you're not rocking with Defy Life, what's your life about? Bye.